Hello and welcome to Budget Model Railways and we're back to N. Um, this is a, a, you haven't seen this one yet, so as you know we've got uh, 13th of May, uh, the Something Model Railway uh, Club show and I was working on a couple of small engage layouts and as, as I do I was toying with other ideas and I got the Cato track out that I've got um, somebody very kindly donated us some and I bought some more points and that sort of thing and realised I could make the way my plans evolve a, a, quite a nice little loop layout and then realised I've got the track to do a double track and the main thing with exhibitions is they work much better when there's lots to see something moving around and so I thought well this will be good and as I do I had a big burst of enthusiasm worked out a track plan found a bit of board uh, from another layout in the shed, cannibalised the two N-gauge layouts I'd already made and then realised that with other projects we've got going on at the moment, uh, real world projects not railway projects, I'm going to struggle to get this done in the month that I've got. So I've been working quite hard. So let me talk through anyway the, the idea of the layout. So it'll be a fairly long video so please stick with me. Uh, there are going to be some new techniques and ideas um, so worth staying with. I know N's not everybody's cup of tea. But what's pushed this really has been these things. These very cheap, very reliable Kato electric locos. And then what that's pulling. Which is the very cheap to do Pico wagons. £8 for a wagon. Um, two wagons and one of those locos is £40, £45. And... Um, so you, it's an extremely cheap way of coming into model railways. You've then got the classic, as Cyril Freeze used to say, four times the space. So this layout would be twice as long and twice as deep in double O. And then you've got things like cheap gauge master buildings, lots of cheap secondhand buildings ticking around that I, I managed to um, salvage off other things. Um, these signal boxes by Cato 2, brand new for £9. Um, and of course the Kato track is quick, took me half an hour to lay all that, it's just super glued onto the board and very reliable. Um, now I am going to infill with loose ballast to, to blend it in a little, but not until I've got the catenary masts up, which will add another feature. So this is a big version, excuse the mess, of what that little layout was. So that was a tester piece really, to see can I make, oh didn't want that there, sorry. Can I make convincing looking sort of concrete retaining walls? And this is something we saw in Europe, particularly in some of the ports and the harbours. So I'll be able to have two trains running at all times. And it means I'll be able to change them at the back, keep one running and change another train at an exhibition. Now it also means that if I run shorter trains on this loop, I can have three trains running. Now when I'm running at home, because there's two sidings there and the loop, that's effectively an ingle nook puzzle, shunting puzzle, but with the attraction of having a loop. So I can run locos in either way when I'm at home and this fits on my desk. So I could run a scheduled service because I could have up and down trains and shunting trains. I can have passing trains and this is using the continental idea where there'll be walkways from the station to the two platforms, which means that this line is actually the goods line not not the passenger and these two are passenger um, and it means I can run passengers and good trains up and down with the front line effectively as an avoiding line and then once I had a bit of a play I came up with this idea courtesy of a couple of layouts at the Uckfield open day the other week and I like the idea of being able to run a train backwards and forwards so that to the viewer there's different trains coming up and down and that'll just be passenger I have got a two car EMU, a big one, but I've also got the excellent Kato pocket line tram there. But I can't get that back without it falling over. <laughs> uh, Doug's going to try and write a bit of software for me, but failing that, I'll just use um, a Mahano controller and run it up and down at exhibitions. A few nice things I found on eBay, little transformer box there, and a rather good electricity substation. Um, very cheap and they will add to it and the rest of the buildings have just come off existing layouts there's a roadway there 
and there'll be a roadway there and a road running along here. I'm going to pan slowly. I know, I know that everybody likes the quick panning and across the bridge. And then in the front here, there'll be a level crossing across. Now, we also use some new technology. So we've been using the laser cutter to make some billboards. And I've got some, um, Doug's printed me off some billboard posters to brighten up the panels. He's also 3D printed me these, which will be uh, a back-to-back -back shelter. Fiddling a bit with one hand, like that, which will go on the platforms. Um, so we're using some of the new technology. All the scenery in the back there has all been made from foam board, this stuff. So it's light and robust and cheap. And this has just been made from mounting board. Cut up, roughly painted with emulsion, then black washed and then dry brushed. And it gives a rather nice texture and a real multi-tonal colour. So for me, this is quite, a, quite an important moment because A, I think it'll be a really good exhibition layout. It is only four feet by 19 inches. So almost one and a half feet, just over one and a half feet by four feet. I know a lot of people don't watch the video, so I'm bound to get comments saying, what size is it? Because people watch the first 30 seconds. Um, but there you go, I've said it a bit later on. So it's really quite a remarkable thing in because this fits on my desk. It's got probably all the running potential I need. Um, I couldn't do UK outline because it's just too expensive. Uh, the locos and rolling stock are silly money. But with being able to buy these things, I've also been buying a lot of Kato wagons cheap, second hand, because nobody wants them. Um, almost brand new Kato electric locos for £45, when the nearest UK equivalent is £90 second hand. Um, if I was coming back into model railways again, this is what I would do, not double O. I would do exactly this. I would gain from the reliability of the Cato track, the cheapness and reliability of the Cato locomotives, Pico wagons, um, and, the sp and gain from the space and the size. So there we go, something very different. That will feature a little bit because I've got to get this finished, um, and then we will be at something. Um, it's just the scope that N gives you and at this price uh, as well. So it's real budget model railway stuff, this. So I know it won't be for the double O people necessarily. Um, I do like being able to do freelance. All these different bright wagons, completely different. This isn't supposed to be anywhere at any time. It's just a model railway, um, which does give you a bit of artistic license, which I'll talk about in another video. So there we go. That's nearly eight minutes. It's probably enough for most people. Thank you for watching. Excuse the shaky camera work. I didn't have my gimbal battery charged, but hopefully you can put up with it. And it's just great as well just to watch locos run around. Um, and at some point it'd be good for shunting as well. So uh, I'll have some more updates soon. And thank you very much for watching.